We're going to be continuing our discussions over the UC, and now that we've finished up taking a look at the endpoints and just an overview there, uh, we're going to be uh, diving a little bit more into reporting. This is mostly intended as a survey of reporting, and we're going to be covering you know, the various reporting options that are built into the system and are available to your end users. Um, as opposed to a, a deep dive, just because there are a number of different types of reports, especially once we start getting into the summary and the filter options that are available. Uh, but uh, we want to make sure that we're giving everybody a strong foundation as we move forward here. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to be talking a lot about detailed reports. Those are the most customizable reporting options we have today. We'll also go over summary reporting and how we can use that for various performance monitoring and metrics. Um, how we can schedule reports for delivery so that if you need to give access to reports but don't want uh, to have to pull them manually or you don't want someone to have the ability to log in and pull their own reports but you do want them to be able to access a report you've built we can do that and we'll talk a little bit about interpreting those in addition um, we're also going to talk briefly about reports that aren't available to the end users but are going to be relevant on a uh, on-premises deployment, uh, but we'll keep that portion brief so we can keep most of this uh, as widely applicable as possible. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch up the screen share here, and we are going to dive on in to reporting. Logging into one of my engineering servers here as a tenant level sub admin. So this is going to be the same view that the highest privileged admin on a tenant themselves can see. Uh, so and this in this case, I'm also set up with the user portal and I'm set up with an ACD supervisor. Most of our focus here is going to be on reporting. Report we've broken out into several sections. The first thing up top is we'll call out um, one item here, which is our active call screen. It's not technically a report, but it made sense to put here to give some visibility into uh, system operations and we want to see you know live or close to live what's going on so we see uh, within three seconds of real time you'll see your current calling statistics very high level so you get the state of the call so i can see in this case this is an outbound call that's connected i can see who's making the call with caller id name and number i can see where the destination of that call was um, if that is an internal destination it will also give the name of that here as well I'll see the start time of the call and duration. Um, again, this only updates every few seconds, so you'll notice that the time and values are not incrementing you know, by one every time, but when it does increment here, that is accurate. And as I said, we aim to keep this with accurate within three seconds of everything that's running through. Uh, most of the time, this is something that's nice to check to see what loads are, to see what activity is like. Uh, but we wouldn't necessarily encourage an admin coming in here and just watching the active call screen. There's not going to be a ton of value here that we don't have other tools and other options that we can provide instead. Um, if we're trying to take a look at what the system itself is doing in terms of uh, operations, we can take a look at our search calls. We can see what that looks like, uh, dig into details on there. Uh, filter those out, add filters based on extensions, for example. Uh, export those out as a CSV so I get an immediate visibility into all of my calls. And I'll talk more about this in a moment. We can also get into call activity on a uh, more granular level. So if I want to see, let's see what calls have happened today or what sort of volume I've had today. I can come in here and I can do a user summary, summary report. And again, I'll be coming back and, and defining all of these more in depth um, as I go here. So, so far on this engineering system, um, I'm the only one who's made a call today. So we can see I've made one outbound call that was answered. We can see your total duration. If you've made multiple calls, you get your average durations. Your average ring times are gonna be based on the time between call being placed and a uh, answer event occurring. And that's all tracked through here and all summarized at the bottom uh, in each section as we'll talk about a little more in depth as we go through this. Uh, and then we can also have our detailed reporting, uh, 
we can go ahead and again, this is where we'll be spending a lot of time on this session today, but we can define the information we want when it comes to detailed reporting. Um, I'll also um, point everyone towards our uh, downloads on a teotech.com site. Uh, there is a, a document on there that describes every one of these fields and what you'd expect to see through there. Uh, so do highly recommend that or referencing the help files if you're not sure what they are. But again, we'll go through and we'll give a definition of each as part of it today. Uh, so as a as a user, I have a lot of different ways to get information out of the system. But it really, the way I approach it, really depends on what I'm looking to do, the information I'm looking to capture, and what action I'm looking to take as a uh, result of what I've captured here. So for example, if I want to get an idea of you know, the people who have called in on a given day, or I'm trying to troubleshoot a specific issue, I'll generally come in here and I'm going to start with my search calls interface. Search calls is great because it lets me very quickly. I'm going to do some wide ranges here uh, just to get us some extra data on this test system. Uh, search calls is great because it lets me very quickly identify timestamps. It lets me very quickly short search and filter. So again, I can come up on here and I can either type in a known caller ID name or number or part of it. So if I want to see all the calls that have been made to or from a 518 number, I can type that in here. I can see that I can get what my inbound calls look like, what outbound calls may have looked like on here. Um, I can filter that through. Uh, I can also uh, filter it by extension. So if I want to see, you know, what have everybody in my Um, extensions that are in the 100 range. Let's go ahead and add a few here that we usually use for testing, and let's see what their call volumes have looked like during this time. I could, of course, have done a search here and gone through and pulled each one, but by this way, I'm capturing anything that goes through uh, a particular extension, and whether it's any of the ones on here will be pulled up, will come through. This is also very useful for troubleshooting because we can get more detail out of it. So if I want to see the way a call flowed, I'm going to go ahead and clear these out so that we can get some calls in here. If I want to see the way a call flowed, I can track it uh, by checking my call flow in the detailed reports here. So I can see this is a directly dialed extension. I can see, uh, let's go back to that 518 search, for example. Um, I can see this call came in. I can see the caller ID, of course. I can see the dialed number. So this is the DID number that the system processed when it received the call. I can see that that DID is supposed to point to, or at least at this time, pointed to uh, extension or auto attendant 7020. So if there's an issue with someone going to the wrong location, for example, that gives me everything I need to know to say, great, let's go ahead and isolate and, and check the auto attendant. Um, I can see it went to a hunt group, and when that hunt group wasn't answered, I can see it was gone. It went to a ACDQ. Uh, so as part of that full flow, I can see how it ran through, and I can see that it wasn't, uh, wasn't answered outside of that queue because the destination name was set to not set here. So I can, at a glance, get a very quick but thorough understanding of what my call flows are looking like. And um, as I said, we can, of course, take these filters, whether it's filtered based on a search or a date, and we can export out a CSV that's going to give us all this information. So your timestamps, durations, all of that will be included and available. And then, of course, you can open those in Excel or your other application of choice for manipulation or other tracking. So as a starting point, when it comes to looking at calls, if I want to understand, again, when I want to understand the details of an individual call, I'm going to start at the search call screen. So I've just pulled up what that uh, CSV export looks like. It's the same data that is on the screen, just uh, displayed a little more simplistically due to the nature of the, the interface here. You can see your, your numbers, you can get an idea of volume, you can get an idea of duration, 
and all of that can be tracked through. You can even see if a recording or anything else was generated as part of that. Let's say though that uh, what you're looking for instead isn't going to necessarily be a specific call, but you're looking to do some trend analysis. You're looking to see, okay, when do my calls come in? What's what are my high volume times? Where do things look like there? We have a few other ways of managing that. That's where our summary reporting and our detailed reporting can come into play and be very useful. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to actually start with a summary. Um, and so we can leave more time for detailed as we go through. On the summary, we offer pre-built, pre-computed uh, options for viewing uh, summarized uh, uh, total call volume and other information related to the performance of the system. Uh, we can go ahead and as we I ran briefly before, you can do an all users grouping that shows everyone in the system. But if you've populated department manager, listed site, or inside location, you can also group those as well. As a reminder, we can bring those in when we import users through the user import screen. And if we take a look at an assigned extension, so I'm going to go ahead and pick on my extension 100 here. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see you've got your report categories, again, for department manager, listed site, and inside location. So any cases where we're looking to build and control how groups occur. Uh, those report categories are very useful. Um, for operations of the system, again, these are completely optional, but when you start getting into analysis and you start getting into uh, really trying to understand what an uh, organization's call traffic looks like, those can be invaluable. It is some work, especially if people are moving between departments. Uh, it is some work to keep things um, up to date, but uh, it can can make things very useful. Coming back over to the reporting here, we'll come back in and we're going to do a grouping in this case based on department. And let's go ahead and pull this out. This is going to generate a uh, again a PDF as your report. Uh, we're not giving the raw calls themselves in here, so you're not getting an entry per call. But for each of these groups, you're going to see statistics. And again, this is an engineering system, so most of these users don't have any call volumes on them. Uh, but you'll see the, the department up top here. For each of the users inside of the department, and this is just a um, alphabetical listing based on display name, you can see the number of calls that were placed, what type of call it was. So you can see if that was an inbound call, that means it's coming in from the outside world over a trunk connection an outbound call, which means it's leaving the system to the outside world over a trunk connection, an internal call indicating that both the beginning and end point of that call were in the system itself and did not touch a trunk. Unanswered calls is a call that was presented to a user but was not answered by a user, and answered calls are calls where a um, the call was accepted. Generally, that's going to be where a 200 OK, if we're going down to the SIP level, was sent, so where an actual answer event occurred. The duration is the length of all calls that were captured during this time period. Average duration is simply duration uh, divided by your total number of calls to give you an idea of how long people are on the phone on average, and then average ring time. Go ahead and I'm going to pull up this operations user where we can see that uh, we've got some more call traffic on here. Lots of outbound calls, some in, lots of internal calls most calls were answered, so we are looking at just about a 75% answer rate on here. Total duration of 25 minutes, but an average duration of 20 seconds and an average ring time of three seconds. So this is a user we can take a look at here and say they do a pretty strong mix of responding to or making outbound calls and making calls internally. They get a few inbound calls directly, but most of what they're doing is is outbound dialing or helping other people within the organization. They're relatively good about answering calls. Uh, so most calls are getting answered. They're not spending too long on a per call basis. Uh, this matters more, of course, if someone's primary job duties are around uh, managing calls. Uh, and then in that case, you might want to say, you know, we want to see what we can do to give you the tools to keep you under a minute or keep you under five minutes or, or whatever the expectation is on here. 
And then the average ring time says, you know, once the call's presented, they're picking up pretty quickly. A couple things I'd like to note on here as it comes to interpreting these numbers. The first is that average ring time is going to be based on when the first answer in a call flow occurs. So if you're going into something that is going to answer and present calls to a user, this could be artificially low. For example, uh, when we come in to reach an auto attendant, there is a one second wait, and then we immediately answer and start playing. So that means any call that comes through an auto attendant is going to have an average ring time that is roughly that zero to one second uh, on here, which will bring an average value down, even if it's coming into a, another user here. So for things like average ring time, I use that as a guide to understand how the system is operating, but I don't I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it as a management goal for an, an individual ex user because call flow is so impactful to that value. Uh, but values such as your duration, the number of calls answered, unanswered calls, those are much clearer and much more easily tied into an individual user. So as we run through, we'll see for each of the groups that are defined, we get a breakout of the totals. And then when we run to the bottom here, uh, we can see everything through. We can see the call or we can see that it was for these given dates, so March 1st through today. Uh, we can see when the date was run, and this is a key item on here about that report date, especially if you're running a report that includes the current day. Uh, this is, of course, going to change as the day goes on, so keeping a track of what that report date and time is is going to be useful. Generally, for reporting where we're looking at performance values or we're looking to understand what's gone on during the day, we would either run those looking at the previous days or we would run those you know, at the end of the day to get an idea of this is what we saw during our active hours for you know, Thursday. We saw you know, this volume of calls. We saw this uh, level of activity. This was our average ring time, our average durations, and all of that can be tracked through. One thing I want to note here, and this is true of any of these grouping options, is that um, if someone uh, coming back here into this user as an example. If someone is not existent in a report category, only the all users grouping is going to include them. Otherwise, um, if I group by department, manager, site, or location, those, uh, those users will not be included in those totals. So it is, uh, is important to call that out so that you're aware as we're, we're running through this, what that means. Uh, we do have you know, your easy quick ranges built in here. Uh, generally, we wouldn't recommend running these for more than a three month window uh, because on an active system, they just take a little longer to run. It is, it is okay to do so. We don't put strong restrictions on there and the database is intended to run that sort of count against it. Uh, but we usually say, you know, take a look at the last month or your quarterly values, anything like that. Uh, so that was our user summary reporting. We also have a few other ones. Inbound and outbound are going to be very similar to what we saw here with uh, the user settings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to generate a inbound report. The key thing on an inbound report here, and we'll hop over to our operations, is that it's only going to reflect calls that came in from the outside world. Uh, the reason why this can be beneficial to track is because you know, you're, you're going to see the number of inbound calls on a user summary. I'm going to be able to come through here. I can see that that value, and I can see that same six for that time span for uh, my user here as I can for it here. The difference, though, is because we're only filtering on inbound traffic in this case. Your duration calculations uh, and ring time calculations are going to differ. So in this case, you'll notice that the duration that, you know, there were six calls, but each call lasted about five seconds on average. So we were only really talking about 30 seconds. Again, this is a, uh, a test system. So we do a lot of short, very short calls on it. Um, generally, if you see something 
that short on a production system. You really want to know, OK, why are you on average answering for five seconds and hanging up? What's going on there? And that might warrant going into the search call screen and filtering on that user for the same time period to get a sense of what their their call activity looks like, for example. You'll also notice that average ring time here is zeroed out. Uh, that generally indicates uh, that the calls are not coming into this user directly, but are instead coming in through an auto attendant. Uh, again, that's the one that I would recommend having the most. Um, it's, a, it's a useful piece of information for system design to say, OK, calls coming through here have already been answered somewhere else before they reach this user, but it's not something that I would manage or tie to an individual user's performance. I want to be very, very clear on here regarding that. So that's our inbound. We also have outbound. So this is going to be cases where let's take a look at what those users are doing when they're dialing outbound. So this is just your inverse of the inbound here. Uh, we can see that we made more calls. Um, again, we had uh, 54 total calls for this. Out of those 14 were unanswered, 40 were answered. Um, you'll notice that we don't have a, an average answer time related for outbound calls. And that's because on an outbound call, your user doesn't have any control over that. Uh, same with, frankly, the, the number of unanswered calls versus answered calls. Uh, that's not going to give us enough information for management purposes. So I can say, great, they made 54 outbound calls during this time. 14 of those, the call ended before it, uh, it was answered by the far end. Now that could be, you know, it rang four times and then the, the caller hung up. It could be that it uh, hit a busy signal. It, it just did not receive an answer state. Uh, types of trunks are going to behave a little differently there as well. So uh, a lot of my assumptions these days when we're doing training are assuming that we're talking about SIP trunks because that's our most commonly deployed uh, trunk type by far. And that's what we expect that most new installations are going to do. Uh, but you'll see some slight differences in how to interpret these if we're talking about a PRI or an analog because they can have slightly different events that might count as what's answered or unanswered. If that's of interest to you, let me know and we're happy to set some time aside in a future session to dive into that. But we can see they've made a decent number of outbound calls and most of those calls have been answered. Usually they're pretty short calls that would generally indicate to me that we might be hitting a lot of voicemail boxes, but we've had 16 minutes of, of call of talk time here. So those are the, the first three that are really fo user focused. Again, users going to have everything on here. Inbound and outbound are going to be filtered out by call type. Um, I would note that we don't have one that talks about just internal calls, simply because we haven't seen a re uh, any significant request from the field for that. Uh, most times when people are looking at the operations of their system, they're wanting to know how am I interfacing with my customers or my uh, clients or whoever's reaching out to me, much more so than, you know, how are we working internally? We do, of course, still have that information in the user values, but I do want to call out that that's, there is not a dedicated summary report that does that. We can build all that same information out. You can use other tools such as anything as basic as Excel to something more advanced, uh, including, you know, uh, Microsoft BI or Tableau or any of those tools to build some great inferences off of it. But in terms of what's built in here, uh, we really are focused on those interactions with the outside world. We have two other types of summary reports that are gonna look a little different. The first is faxing. So everything else we've looked at to this point, and again, let me go ahead and extend my range here. Everything else we looked at to this point is based around just phone traffic. So. How long did you talk for? How long did you answer? Those are the key things. We take a look at the faxes, though. Uh, we want to know how many faxes were sent, how many pages were sent. Out of those, what was successful, what was received, and your metrics are different. Um, again, this is something that you know I could. You can make a, a case for the user summary, inbound summary, or outbound summary would be actively used for coaching or training of an individual user. You know, hey, I see you're not doing, I see you're taking a long time to answer or your calls durations are pretty short. Is there anything that's going on there that we need to look into or whatever that might be? 
Vaccine, though, is generally going to be more of a uh, issue of looking at volumes. Now, this particular system, uh, we were doing some fax testing where we were intentionally trying to break certain operations. Give, so that's why we have so many more sent than we have successfully sent here. Uh, but this is going to be much more about what are we seeing in the uh, operations of the system as a whole and much less about an individual user. Uh, this is also only going to capture traffic that's to or from the built-in fax server on the UC. So if you, for example, your clients are using an analog fax machine attached to the system, either directly through an interface card or through uh, an ATA or gateway, uh, those are not going to show up in the these call reports. Those will just be viewed as a fax uh, Pardon me. Those will just be viewed as a fax event as opposed to, or as a call event as opposed to a fax event here, and so they won't be broken out. Uh, again, this is useful for kind of at a glance, how are things working? You know, do I have things configured the right way? Do we maybe need to use user training? Uh, and can be beneficial from that aspect of it. And finally, we have our ACD options on here. User inbound, outbound, and fax are all about an individual user or extension, whereas the ACD functions differently. The biggest things with ACD uh, is going to be that we're only looking at the queue performance. We're not necessarily looking at individual user performance because so much of how an ACD operates outside of an individual user's perspective. Uh, in terms of distribution strategy and all of that, we want to make sure that we're giving a strong information about what's manageable and what's actionable through here. Uh, we can run it against all ACD queues. We can also filter on specific ones. So if I wanted to capture just events for this loop or just events for accounting, for example, I can filter those the same as if I was filtering that search call screen for an extension. Or if I leave that off, I'll capture all ACD events. I'm going to go back in time a little more here just to capture some call testing we've done previously. Um, and then I want to go ahead and I'm going to just run a report. So for each report, it's broken up by Q and it's going to be labeled as Q and then the access code associated with this. Uh, anytime during that period, that the report was run for that has call traffic associated with it. You're going to see the date. You're going to see the time window the call occurred on. You're going to get the number of calls that are answered, abandoned, exited, total number of calls, your average wait time across those total number of calls, and your average talk time if the calls were answered. Uh, so we can see, for example, here just at a glance that this Q1140 um, basically not answering any calls. Everything's calling in and abandoned. If this was a production system, I'd be that would raise a red flag for me. I'd say, okay, let's figure out why you're sending callers that are just hanging up when they reach this queue. Um, as this is an engineering system where we're intentionally testing different states, that's not of a concern on this particular system. But again, if this was production, that's something where we'd come in and say, let's let's check your call flow, let's check your users, make sure something's going on because that doesn't look quite right. Um, if we come down here, we can see. Other queues, we can see, uh, for example, our 2120 here. We're getting more calls that were answered, and out of those answered calls, we can see a much shorter average wait time and about a two minute talk time on here. Uh, again, just like the some of our other reports, such as the outbound summary or inbound summary, if those call events aren't on here or if they're not filtered in, you're not going to see those those results so we'd only see them for the cues we're looking at. One of the biggest differences we do is everything else we look at is going to be a single line item per. So if I take a look at a user summary, I get one line item for this user. The ACD though, we do a slice based approach, which is very useful when you're taking a look at load management and staffing planning. Say when the calls are coming through and you can get that captured. We control that with our interval option here. This is controls the time slice. We can go down from anywhere from 10 minutes to 60 minutes on that. 60 minutes is what we default to, and it's going to say for this given hour, 
here's what happened. Here's the volumes of calls we saw. If we bring that down, though, uh, it's going to get much more beneficial and much more granular. So all of a sudden, if I'm taking a look at this same Q1140, and if I take a look at this Thursday, October 21st, if I take a look at just the ACD summary review here for it, you know, I can see that we had three times, and I can kind of get a sense, okay, calls came in just before lunch, around the lunchtime, and then a couple hours later. Uh, but if I come in here and do these 10-minute intervals, I can actually get a feeling for when those calls came through uh, in a much more granular fashion. Uh, this can help with you know, planning for breaks, for planning for coverage, uh, because if you're looking at just an hour-by-hour -hour breakdown, that's useful. There's benefit to it, which is why we include that, but uh, it may not give you the full picture. So that's why we allow you to choose different levels of granularity so that you can really drill down further in on these ACDQ reports. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, with ACD, we'll just finish up here with a definition of terms up top, and then we'll move on to our detailed reporting. So again, this does appear a little differently. Uh, biggest difference you're going to see is that you have the Q listed up here and then all the statistics for said Q below it. Uh, interval is going to be date and time followed by time window where these call events occurred again only calls or only times that there was at least one call through it are going to show traffic on here coming down to this 2120 we also get a much more detailed picture when we go through that 10 minute slice as opposed to the hour long slice if we're taking an hour long we see okay six calls came in at some point from this 5 to 6 p.m but I can see my breakdown and say, OK, most of those calls came in before 530 and I can plan more. Uh, I can plan my coverage much more specifically this way. Uh, so your interval again is that time slice that we selected. Answered are the number of calls that came into the queue and were answered inside of the queue. Abandoned are calls that came into the queue and the caller disconnected before. They were answered or before they hit a timeout. As a reminder on all of our ACD queues, uh, you can set a timeout value on here. If you set it to zero, that's indefinite and they'll just sit in the queue until answered. But if you set it to anything else, once you reach that value, it's gonna time out and exit out of the queue to wherever you provide as an alternative destination. And that's where exited comes into play. An exited call is one that hit your timer. Uh, you can almost think of these as timed out to an exit destination. Um, abandon are generally when we're looking at it here, abandon are the value we manage to first. Um, if calls are coming in, we want to keep that number of abandoned calls as low as possible. If we ha see high numbers of abandoned calls, uh, those are cases where it might make sense to build a detailed report to capture those or to build a, uh, or to go in and search calls for those time periods and just get a better sense of what might be going on. Uh, there's a huge difference when it comes to an abandoned call where someone was on hold for five minutes and gave up, someone was on hold for 30 minutes and gave up, or someone called in to the ACD, heard hold music and hung up two seconds later. Those all count as abandoned, but very different caller experiences and very different uh, recommendations for how we would approach improving those numbers based on that. So this can give us an idea of where to look and when to look may not give us everything we need to make a, a strong recommendation in terms of what exactly to change, but it identifies where changes may be needed. Uh, so abandoned, it, again, is the one we you generally are, we see managed to the most. Um, exited means we're timing out. Uh, those exited numbers, depending on the call flow, could be something you're trying to time out because it's going to a, or you're trying to reduce and minimize as well, because you might just have it go into a voicemail box, for example and you want to minimize the number of voicemails that that box receives during business hours. But it could also indicate that you're going to an auto attendant for more self-service options um, or other events here. Because of that, the exited one is probably your most ambiguous state. It's not a necessarily a negative that you exited, especially if you're working with relatively short timers on your ACDQ. So if you have a 30-second timer, your exited values are going to be higher. If you have a 
30 minute timer, your exited values are going to be lower, but there's no value judgment associated with that. It just tells you what the system is doing and how it's processing calls through these queues. Uh, other values that we see managed to a lot is going to be your average wait time. Uh, so for example, here we can see calling in that most of the day your average wait time is below a minute. But first thing in the morning here, we had people calling or first thing in the testing here. So that five to five ten window, we had people calling in and sitting on hold before answered for over seven minutes. So that says, OK, are we, you know, if we're doing a shift change here, are we not getting logged in fast enough? Do we have a capacity issue at this time? And then everything else in this windows look look good. We're generally answering well, but we do have some outliers. Can we explain what those outliers are? Again, those are great chance opportunities to go in and search for individual calls in those windows to get the full picture. Um, average talk time is another one. Generally, this is a value that people try and um, have a target value they want to be under because uh, that means you're handling calls efficiently. Um, some of these are, are looking great. Let's say you know, you're a support call. You want to have your calls done in five minutes from being answered. You know, this window time here, that's great. We're under four minutes, in fact, but we can take a look at other places and, you know, we're over 13 minutes here, over 43 minutes here. Uh, so why is our talk time so much higher during these times? Is it because we're getting special types of calls? Is it because we're having different people answer the calls that may need some more training, especially if you have coverage windows where people log in to help out at certain points of the day? I don't know about about you, but I know myself, if I'm less familiar with the process, I take significantly longer to run through it. So it might be I'm just getting to someone who needs more training. Again, always indicates or it's always beneficial to take this information and dive in more by pairing it with our other reporting tools. But this can help us understand at a glance overall statistics. One of the key things I do want to call out here is we, we do not at this time associate um, the individual agents inside of this report. It's possible to get that information by building a, a detailed report, for example, and pulling that through. But because a lot of that call flow is dependent on um, the uh, configuration of the ACD queues, uh, we want to make sure that we're focused on ACDs first because that's generally where we find the most actionable values. You know, do we need to check timeout values? Do we need to check how long calls are being presented to agents? Those are usually where we see the most impact for operations. And so that's what the summary is, is built on and targeted on. Coming over to detailed reports here, go ahead and add a new one. Detailed reports are a really powerful tool, but they're also a tool that um, has a lot of complexity. The power comes from the complexity, but it also means it's easier to run into issues with this. So. Uh, that's why generally uh, when I'm taking a look at systems, I start with search calls or I start with summary to get an idea of what are we looking at, what time frames do we want to investigate more thoroughly before I come in and run a detailed report. When we create a detailed report, effectively what we're doing is telling the system, give me a, or a call detail re reporting for this time window and during this time window, the things that are matched by different types of calls or more advanced filters where we can filter on a lot of other data in the system. Uh, anything that matches this, give me this specific data for it. When I first come in here, you know, I can build a report where all I need to do is give it a name, select a time zone, a date range, and the hours. Uh, for both those date ranges and hours, you can make those custom and define those out as needed. Uh, generally, if you're doing that, that's something that you'll be coming through and modifying on a regular basis for each report. If you're going to be doing a scheduled report, you'll generally use one of these pre-canned ones. Uh, but you're able to say, I only want to see calls during my normal business hours, so 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., for example. Um, I only want to see calls on certain days, so let's say I want to see calls for this week through here. Uh, all, all options, all available to you. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just in the interest of generating some more data, we're going to go back a ways here. Um, if there's certain types of calls I'm looking for, I can turn on the filter. 
Uh, one thing to note is there are certain call events. There are rare call events, but there are certain call events that may not show as one of these call types. Uh, so we default those to off, and then there's no call type filtering applied whatsoever. If we turn them all on, we're only going to see call events associated with one of these types. Or if we say, I just want to see my inbound calls that were answered, unanswered, or went to voicemail, but I don't want to see anything about faxing, we can filter that through here. Specifics of what you'd add and why you'd filter it are going to vary widely based on the information you're looking to get out of the system, but it's all available to you here. And then, of course, we need to tell the system, right, we've told it what type of calls we want, we've told it when we want those calls from, uh, and now we need to tell it what data we want out of it. And this is where a lot of that complexity really comes into play and a lot of that power comes into play. We have a large number of fields in here. Uh, our help documentation includes definitions for these as well, so uh, you don't have to memorize what all of these mean at, one, at any time. Uh, what you do is you go ahead and say, yes, I want to see the date and time for the calls that match here, and generally would recommend going ahead and putting a sort on at least one column as well, so you get predictable ordered results back. Um, the date time is the most common one we're going to sort on here, and you can sort ascending or descending. So if you want to see newest calls first, you're going to be descending. You'll start with the, the latest and go backwards. If you want to see oldest calls first, you'd start with ascending. So you start with the longest to go date and start working your way up. Uh, once I've built in a field like this, I have two options. I can either add or I can add and close. If I add and close, it's just going to add that one, take me back to the view here, and I can see that's how it's been added in. If instead I say, great, well, we've got the date and time of the call. Let's go ahead and throw in a duration as well. And I could choose to sort this if I wanted to, but it's only going to, if I throw a second sort on here, it's only going to um, sort inside of things where the date and time matched. So generally in this case, we, we pick one value that we sort by uh, and leave that alone. But so I got a call duration here. Let's say I know I want to add call duration in a couple of other fields. So what I might do here, rather than just hitting add and going back out, is I can do or adding close and going back out. I can actually hit add and it throws it on the list, but lets me add more. So let's grab the type of call it was as well. Call type is going to be your inbound, external, outbound, external, internal call. Call subtype is going to be this, the last destination that the call reached was an extension or a ACDQ or a hunt group or a voicemail or a park location or whatever it was where that that call finished, whatever the last connection was or last attempted connection was before the call finished is going to be your subtype. So uh, I often, if I pull up the call subtype or if I pull up the call type, I'm usually wanting to add the call subtype as well. The next step are pretty self-explanatory fields in terms of your source name and number and your destination name and number. Uh, those are going to be who placed these calls, who received these calls um, on here. These are almost always values that we want to add in. Uh, but if you're looking for other types of reporting, though, we can also do things like break out the area code out of here. So that if you want to see, I want to see what my call volumes looks like from different locations and different area codes, you can do that this way rather than having to pull out the source number and then manipulate externally for example. We also offer similar things with the month, day of week, and hour of day. Uh, these can be useful if you're looking to build out um, trend lines around your, your traffic and volumes at various times. Generally, these are things that most reporting tools you're doing can also build off of the date timestamp that's included, but um, I do want to call that out because those can be useful as well. And notes is mostly a deprecated field that you're not going to see much use of at this point um, that originally was tied into a um, an early feature of the original user portal not our, our new refreshed user portal that allowed uh, users to add individual notes to a call um, but we found in in practice that it was um, not used enough to warrant so we've kept it in there because there is some some old deployments where that information could be relevant uh, but generally for the purposes of new reports you're running today, that's something that can be ignored. Rate and cost are going to be associated with uh, outbound calling, and this is going to be 
what carrier was selected is going to influence this. So let's say your your default we rate at a dollar a minute or a 1.0 per minute. Your rate's going to be that 1.0. And let's say you talked for five minutes. The cost is simply your rate times your duration on here. Uh, most deployments, this isn't something that needs to come into play uh, because you're not doing a lot of uh, multi-trunk management. In cases where you are working with multiple different vendors and providers for uh, trunking services, this can be useful, which is why we include it on here, but it is something that um, with most modern deployments we see as, as extraneous information because generally you're working with one provider and you're just sending all calls out to that provider. If you're doing a deployment like that, rate and cost can pretty much be ignored. Uh, time to answer is going to be similar to what we saw in the summary reporting. This is the time from when the call was originally placed to when an answer event occurred. Uh, dialed number is an important one. Dialed number is the original number that reached the system. Now, for an, most cases, your dialed number are going to be pretty close to your destination number or first destination number, which is something you'll see a little bit lower down on the list here. Uh, however, depending on how DIDs are mapped, depending on how other call uh, routing options such as uh, access codes are set. Your dialed number is not always going to match what your destination number is. And so we break those out separately because there can be used to see what your users are doing in the system. For inbound calls, your dialed number is generally going to be the DID that the system processed the call in, where the destination in those events are going to be where that DID points to. Both useful pieces of information, but they do act a little differently. Go ahead and I'm going to add that one in here. We've got disposition and cause value. These are two ways of looking at, two different ways of looking at the same information. Disposition is going to tell you the English term or the term for what occurred in English. So you're going to see your normal clearing, user busy, events like that are going to be listed as a disposition. This can be good to see, okay, I'm making a bunch of in outbound calls. Why isn't it going to a certain number? Uh, okay, I've seen a lot of busy signals coming in at this time. Cause values are tied to the exact same as the disposition, but these are the numeric uh, status codes that are associated with these. Uh, there's some benefits to one versus the other, but it really depends on the type of analysis you're looking to do, uh, so which is why we offer both on here. Um, if you're unsure, generally we'd start with disposition. Carrier location is what carrier, uh, as defined in the global settings, what carrier this call routed out from. And trunk is what call or what trunk the call was associated with. Carrier location is only going to be for outbound calling. Trunk is going to be for any call that comes to or from the PSTN. If you're working with integrated cards, you can see which card it was, you can see which port it was, and if it's a PRI card, you can see the channel on the port. So let's say you have two, two port PRI cards. You can see, okay, this was card one, port two, channel five. Uh, Modern systems where we're doing mostly SIP trunks, this is overkill, we can leave that out, but there are cases where this is beneficial if you are still supporting customers with PRIs. Codec is going to be the negotiated codec for the call. Uh, this can be useful if you're looking to troubleshoot why a certain calls aren't connecting properly. Uh, you can see what's being offered on here. And we have fax information, which ties back into that fax summary where we can see results and results code. Again, your result and result code are gonna be very similar to the difference between a disposition and a cause value. So uh, a written out reason for an event or result as well as a numeric code associated with that. Both have their benefits, but they're generally a one-to-one -one correlation between the two. So it just depends on how you're looking to process this information. And then for outbound calls, you can see what caller ID name and number were set. So uh, you can see, for example, whether you're going out and those calls are being set at the carrier level or the access code level, or they're being set at the individual user extension level, and you can track that through. That's beneficial for making for doing a check to see caller ID is what's expected uh, without having to go through and uh, go through a bunch of calls in the user search. First destination name and number, I touched on this briefly. This is the first place in the system the call reached. So this is generally, if you're going through an auto attendant or a hunt group, this will generally be that value first. We compare this with um, 
destination number to get a view into what that call flow looks like, similar to what we can do in, with the search calls. Um, generally, search calls and actually clicking in and viewing what that call flow is is going to be more predictable uh, and more reliable of a source, but this can also help with taking a look at where's most of my load coming from, where is it going to. Um, and then finally, we have source note and destination note. These are values that are automatically set as call events occur. So this might be uh, indicated that it was via uh, an auto attendant or was transferred by another extension. It's going to be either in the source note or the destination note, depending on the call flow. Sometimes you'll see that in both as well. So additional information in here, this is one of the places that the search calls screen uses to fill some information about what you're seeing. And then finally, billing number. In most cases, this is not something that you're going to need to run on, but if you are working with a SIP trunk where you're providing a different billing number than a caller ID number, you can use this here to track um, that as well. So you can see, okay, I'm sending out a caller ID uh, 4253491000, but I'm sending out my billing number as 4253491020. So if you're trying to correlate that back with um, statements from your uh, trunk provider, that can be beneficial. This is only going to apply to SIP trunks, and again, only SIP trunks with a particular configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here for now. Save that. Once we have a report here, we can, of course, come back in and edit it. We can also export that as a CSV. I'm going to open that up just to give you some visibility into it. So I've got my, I added date time, duration, call type, subtype, and dialed number. Um, in a lot of cases, we'd want to pull more information than this, but this is the uh, still beneficial even in this location here. So I can see, you know, how are my calls coming through? And I can see in this case, most of my calls are internal, which is what you'd expect on a test system like this. I can see some are inbound calls, some are outbound calls. I can see where they're dialing, where they run through. Um, I can see someone was testing park and doing the wrong uh, numbers here um, so that they would reach denied and then they use the right numbers so they were properly showing as park load destinations. Um, I can see when we've reached an extension. I can see this user, for example, dialed uh, the music on hold test number and so was listening to music on hold directly. So you can get a lot of information out of here. Um, details, of course, are going to vary greatly based on the um, the columns you put in here. This is something where what we generally do if you are looking for information that you can't pull from the other reports is we'd recommend you build a report that fits what you're looking for and then watch it over time rather than building a new report each time. It's going to give you some more insight and more actionable information because if you're building a new detailed report each time and you're not bringing out the exact same information, it, it suddenly becomes more like an apples to oranges comparison. So we want to make sure that we're uh, giving clean, accurate uh, data where possible. Um, and of course, when you're in a tool like this, you can do uh, all sorts of uh, filtering and analysis. If, for example, if you're someone who loves pivot tables, you can take this X or turn it into a pivot table and get all your, your charts and information this way as well. Um, so can be a very strong tool, but it is very much something where you want to be ready to customize that. I'm going to go ahead and end today on the report overview from there. Uh, as a quick note for everyone, um, we do have one other type of reporting, which is uh, some system configuration reports. Those are only available to system level admins and are accessible through the uh, tenant screen. So from there, you can see things such as where the IDs are routed in the system. You can export that out for easy analysis rather than having to go through the um, system configuration itself, which is a, it's particularly beneficial if you're looking to share that with someone or build a phone list out of that. Um, our next session here, um, we've done a lot of deep dives recently, so our next session is going to be more of an open discussion and quick smaller topics. Uh, so I do request that if you have any uh, 
any questions, anything you'd like us to cover, whether that's a particular scenario or a uh, a use case that you'd like us to cover, for example, let us know. Feel free to let us know in advance, either through your uh, channel rep or direct to me, however it works for you, um, or feel free to ask on the call as well. Um, and we'll be going through a, uh, a grab bag of all sorts of fun next time. I want to say thank you again for everyone for joining. Um, as always, we're here as a resource for you, and if there's ever anything we can do, uh, we are always here to help. And Frank, I do appreciate you calling that out. Um, for those of you who didn't check the, the chat here, Frank rightly points out that if you're going to be doing some of this detailed reporting, the filters are really the key to getting the data you want. Um, it's very easy to get too much data or data that's not relevant to the question you're trying to answer. Uh, so that's a great way to just reinforce and wrap up that we always want to take a look at what action are we looking to take as a result of the data we're capturing that's going to help us um, best construct the reports that we're building out. All right, with that, I'll let everybody get back to their day. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.